The dark woods are an ancient place. Stories, myths, and rumors have haunted them for generations, but the trees are older than the stories, and some things are much, much older than the trees. Not everything that crawls, climbs, and flies through the forest is understood. There are still mysteries to be found in the shadows. There are still dragons in the dark woods of Wales. This ominous quote was found in a handwritten note unassumingly placed in a small cardboard box. There was more in the box, of course, newspaper clippings, classified documents, letters, and a collection of chilling photographs. But it was this quote more than anything else that would come to haunt the author. He'd stumbled across the box late one afternoon in the attic of the home he'd recently purchased. What that box contained was almost too far-fetched to be believed, but the evidence couldn't be denied. What follows is an abridged version of the author's recounting of what he discovered in that box, and eventually the records of his own expeditions into the eerie forest not too far from that old home. As it turns out, there is truth to nearly every legend, and though it can be difficult to believe at times, even the seemingly civilized world still holds ancient secrets. Together, we'll join the author on his quest to uncover the mystery of the dragons of the dark woods. For centuries, and perhaps even longer, the dark woods have been the source of numerous legends. An air of the unknown hangs over the forest, even heavier than the mist that drifts among its trees. If asked directly, it's unlikely that any reasonable person would be able to articulate the exact reason why the mere mention of the dark woods sends a shiver down their spine, or why they forbid their children from playing there. But as the area surrounding the dark woods becomes more and more populated, more and more evidence has arisen that seems to shed light on just what that ancient forest harbors. The first modern accounts of strange occurrences in or near the dark woods can be traced back to the 19th century, and thanks to the excruciating efforts of whomever compiled that box of clippings, photos, letters, and journals, we now have first-hand access to some of these reports. But before we dive into these eyewitness descriptions, allow me two moments to tell you about this video's sponsor. Look guys, I know you've probably heard about Raid Shadow Legends, but you haven't heard about it from me, okay? Now as you know, I love world building, and this game has a fully fleshed out world with more lore than I could hope to get through anytime soon. As of right now, there's more than 600 characters with surprisingly compelling backstories. Now one of Raid's factions that I found most interesting at least are the Dwarves. It's just been super fun to see how they fit into this rich world called Teleria, so let's just get to know them a little bit better. And by the way, download links are in the description, so use those to download Raid for yourself, either to your phone or your PC. Okay, so back to these Dwarves. As the third race made during the time of creation, they've largely kept to themselves in these subterranean chambers just like the cave folk, and they've only interacted with the other kingdoms via trade emissaries and middlemen. But here's where things get interesting. Their society is divided across a rigid caste system made up of delvers, craftsmen, dwarven nobility, and priesthood. <laughs> and I'm a sucker for artwork, and this stuff is fantastic. The bottom line is that these guys are about to rock this world, and they look really freaking cool. There are evil looking ones, nobles, barmaids, sorcerers. It's a living, breathing society, and it's world building at its best. Look, I'll be honest with you, I was on the proverbial fence about any type of mobile game, honestly, but the amount of detail here is incredible. Of course, a game with no gameplay would be pointless, but Raid does not disappoint. The fights are super fun, and there's nothing more satisfying than teaming up to take down some giant enemy. Like this time, I took down this flippin' sweet looking dragon. <clears throat> Barely. And by the way, now is the perfect time to get started because there is a ton happening in Raid this month. Daily special events, all new champions, but the big deal for this month is something called the Guardian Ring. This thing gives you new ways to use your champions, like a whole new faction guardian system, a new way to get legendary champions you might have missed out on, and an entirely new way to upgrade your favorite champions. It's kind of a big deal, and I can't wait to get in on this, so if you, like me, are on that fence, why don't you just hop on down off of that thing? Look, I'll even give you a head start. Just click the link in the description or scan this QR code and you'll get an epic hero named Chanaru. You'll also get 200k silver, 1 XP boost, 1 energy refill, and 1 ancient shard so you can summon an epic champion as soon as you get in game. Now when you download Raid, you'll find all of those perks waiting for you right here in the inbox. So go right there and look for those. And once you're in, you can find me under the in-game name Thought Potato. And if you're quick, you can join my clan. And guys, it is that easy. Just click the link in the description and I'll see you in game. Now, let's get back to the documents that small box contained. One of the earliest dated accounts is of an event that occurred in 1839 when nine men fleeing from an armed protest found themselves hopelessly lost in the dark woods. Disoriented and exhausted, the group decided to set up camp for the night, but at around 11 p.m. the group was jolted awake to the sound of a man screaming. Despite their best efforts, in the inky black of the forest, the men were unable to determine the source of the screams. Helpless, the men listened as the screams were eventually smothered by another, somehow worse noise, one that sounded eerily similar to the flapping of wings. When dawn finally broke, the men found one of their members, Samuel Lewis, dead of what seemed like a vicious animal attack. Samuel's son was found nearby, clinging to life, though covered in deep scratches and tattered clothes and in a state of complete shock. Though the boy eventually recovered, he only spoke of the event a single time. He described burning eyes in the darkness, calling to each other, and the screaming of the demons that enveloped him. But no matter how insidious the dark woods may seem, such blatant attacks are blessedly uncommon. 
In fact, while adults seem generally content to ignore the dark woods altogether, children have little fear of the place. One account describes a little girl of no more than nine years old who liked to feed birds near the forest's edge. But as you might have guessed, it wasn't just birds that came for the food she laid out. The little girl later described small flying creatures she called her friends and who would play with her, bringing her bits of ribbon and shiny rocks. An even more bizarre account describes a time another child wandered into the dark woods. The child's parent called out for her for half an hour. When the child finally emerged, she was covered in mud and laughing about her new friend. Eventually, more evidence of these creatures' existence began to surface. One letter contained within the box describes a man who managed to acquire a dead specimen of a small winged creature. The man brought the body to a nearby university, certain that it would be classified as some species entirely new to science. Perhaps unsurprisingly, though, the specimen was rejected as a fake. And sadly, that specimen has likely been lost to time. As time marched into the 20th century, though, sightings became even more common and strange creatures began to be caught on film. One newspaper clipping reports that two miners discovered, amidst piles of dead rodents, a similar corpse of an unidentified flying creature. Needless to say, the discovery shocked readers and scientists alike. And an even more recent article describes a 13-year-old boy named Joseph. While exploring the woods, he stumbled across a small creature unlike anything he'd seen before. The boy described it as small, cute, and red, and it seemed completely unperturbed by Joseph's presence. He managed to snap a photo of the strange creature, which, as the paper reports, was analyzed by a local professor at Welsh University. Perhaps coming at no surprise, in regards to identification, the photo evidence was determined to be inconclusive. Sightings continued for decades, but the human mind shudders at the thought of confronting the unknown. As a result, for the general population, the existence of these creatures never progressed beyond urban legend. But now, we'll get a first-hand look into just what that forest holds and what the author found there. What follows is a select number of descriptions and artwork provided by the author based entirely on what he saw within. Now, let's step across the threshold of the familiar and enter into the dense mystery of the dark woods. We'll begin our catalog with Dracosimrigensis ascensis. This bat-like dragon has a wingspan of around 50 centimeters, or nearly 20 inches. These creatures are fiercely territorial ambush hunters who will attack any animals, or people, who find themselves within that territory. As an offensive attack, Ashensis will often lay in wait for the perfect moment to strike before launching into the air with an incredible burst of speed. Fortunately for any human visitors, this creature's main food source seems to be larger insects and small birds. Still, it's in everyone's best interest to keep your distance. Now, if your journey through the forest brings you near a river, you may be so fortunate as to catch a glimpse of the fast-moving Dracosimrigensis borealis, a strikingly colorful, medium-sized dragon with a compact body, distinctive brow horns, and specialized jaws. These creatures feed primarily on fish, and if your eyes are quick enough to catch them, you can see them dive from high in the trees down into the water, disappear for a moment, and then burst back into the air, often with some small fish in its mouth. They will then retreat to the upper forest canopy where Borealis spends most of its time. One of the smallest of the dragons comes in the form of Draco Simrigensis minimus, which only has a wingspan of about 15 centimeters, or roughly 5 inches. This diminutive, nearly hairless dragon has enormous eyes for its size, making them equally efficient hunters in both the night and the day. Its large whiskers may aid in the detection of its prey, which is usually ground-dwelling invertebrates. Interestingly, these little creatures seem completely unintimidated by human presence. But the dragons of the dark woods get even smaller. With a wingspan of just 5 centimeters, or just under 2 inches, Draco Simrigensis tulumnus is easy to miss. As it flies among the flowers of the rare meadows within the dark woods, it could easily be mistaken for a butterfly or other insect. As you might have guessed though, tulumnus feeds only on plants but that doesn't make it any less intimidating, especially for any other dragon who might think of him as an easy meal. The large, colorful spike on its tail warns predators away and acts as an effective defense mechanism if they fail to heed its warning. But though many of the species of dragons so far discovered are beautiful and even friendly in appearance, the dark woods is also home to a plethora of far more bizarre creatures. For example, Draco Simrigensis cuculidae features long facial tentacles, and even more strange, an articulated, insect-like ovipositor for a tail. Females use this unique organ to inject their offspring directly into the eggs of birds. Once cuculidae's young are matured, they hatch from the bird's eggs and immediately begin to devour their host bird. This disturbing method of reproduction is entirely unique to this life form, and its odd body plan defies classification. Of course, once the sun goes down in the dark woods, the forest takes on a whole new life. Nocturnal dragons emerge from their holes and nests, and after a long day of hibernation, these creatures of the night are ready to hunt. 
The inky darkness of the forest makes it virtually impossible to see at any great distance, but don't worry, you'll likely hear Draco Simrigensis Ignis Perendri well before you see it. If it feels threatened, it will let out a terrifying low-pitched scream. At around 35 centimeters, or around 14 inches in length, this robust omnivore could do some damage, but fortunately, it's more bark than bite. Of course, that doesn't make it any less intimidating. It often feeds on bioluminescent worms, which lends it an otherworldly glowing appearance, especially around its large, interlocking teeth. Species like these are distracting, to say the least, but as you make your way through the forest, take great care to watch your footing. It's easy to stumble over a large rabbit hole or two, but as with everything in the dark woods, these seemingly innocuous holes may hide something far more dangerous than a rabbit. Draco Simrigensis tyricus is a large, flightless dragon. It spends its life almost entirely underground, and as such, has developed a number of unique adaptations. Its wings have become effective shoveling tools, and its head is thick and armored. And though it's lost the ability to hear, it is extremely sensitive to vibrations. Tyricus hunts by invading rabbit holes and collapsing them, crushing and trapping its prey within. It usually eats rabbits and other medium-sized mammals, but if a stray foot were to find its way into one of its subterranean chambers, say from an explorer who wasn't watching where they were going, well, this dragon doesn't discriminate. As you've probably noticed by now, the dragons of the dark woods are mostly small creatures, with only a few species being larger than a man's hand. There are exceptions, of course, but for our last stop in this forest, we'll again zoom in to find Draco Simrigensis venenata, a tiny but dangerous predator. This species prefers the dark, and since its wingspan is only about 10 centimeters or almost 4 inches, sightings are exceedingly rare. Of course, usually by the time you see one, it's already too late. Venenata spends its time in low-hanging branches, waiting for unsuspecting prey to pass beneath. Once it senses something below, it will drop down and deliver a powerful, venomous bite before quickly retreating. It will wait very patiently for its prey to expire before moving in for the feast. Interestingly, these creatures are sightless, so they rely solely on their acute sense of hearing and long whiskers to sense their surroundings. And so, dear viewer, our time in this forest has come to an end. It goes without saying that the dark woods is not a place where humans should stay for long, and already we run the risk of overstaying our welcome. Of course, there is much more to discover among these ancient trees. If you'd like to venture further into this realm of the unknown, be sure to visit dragonsofwales.com, where you can find a link to this book, Dragons of the Dark Woods, as well as several others by the same author and illustrator, Andy Fraser. And of course, links will be provided in the description. The catalog of the Dragons of Wales is far from complete, and there is always something more to discover. Be sure to subscribe to this channel as well, because I have a feeling we'll be coming back to Wales very soon. Until then, as always, thanks for watching.